بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب زدني علما سورة النبا a brief detail about it the explanation of سورة النبا it's in juz 30 the first surah amma yatasalun about what are they asking one another so each other about uh, Allah himself uh, then answer this question saying this disbelievers they are asking each other about what they are asking about the an nabail azim allazi hum fihi mukhtalifun about the great news that over which they are in disagreement about the great news they are in disagreement the news is everything that Prophet ﷺ came with clear teachings. Clear teachings and guidance they are uh, talking about and especially the information he gave regarding the day of judgment, the last day on which people will be resurrected, judged and rewarded as the punishment about that thing. And later we see, uh, let's, uh, let me give you uh, the detail of this surah before going further, surah to naba So here the period of revelation, the surah was revealed during the early period of Prophet's residence at Makkah. So it's a Makki surah, major issues and divine laws and guidance. Creation of the heaven, earth, mountains and vegetation clearly points out towards the day of judgment. Resurrection and man's accountability in the court of Allah, righteousness will be pleased. While the disbelievers will be put in hell where they will be treated with scalding water and decaying filth. The theme of this surah is to affirm the resurrection and hereafter. And to warn the people of consequence of disbelieving it. When Prophet ﷺ first started to preach Islam in Mecca, his message consists of three elements. Not to do shirk. Do not associate any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has appointed him as a Rasul, Prophet, Messenger. Third, this world will come to an end on a day and the another world will be established. All the former and the later generation will be resurrected with the same bodies in which they lived and worked in this world. They will be called to account for their beliefs and deeds. And those who emerge as believing and righteous in this accountability will go to Jannah. And those who are proved to be disbelieving and wicked will go to the hellfire. And of this first uh, elements was highly unpleased for the people of Makkah. They were not uh, disbelievers in the existence of Allah. They believe in his being, the supreme sustainer, creator and providence. And also admitted that all those uh, beings whom they regard as their deities were themselves Allah's creatures. Therefore, in this regard, the only thing they disputed was uh, whether they had any share in the attributes and powers of divinity and divinity, divine being itself or not. As for the second element, the people of Makkah were not prepared to accept it. However, they could not deny during the 40 years of life that the Prophet ﷺ had lived among them. Before his claim to be a prophet, they had never found him lying or deceitful or one who would adopt unlawful methods for selfish ends. As for the third element, resurrection, they mocked it most and expressed unusual wonders at it. They regarded it as a remote from reason and impossible. They talk about it as an incredible even, inconceivable in their assemblies. Therefore, reference is made to the common talk and the doubts that were being uh, expressed in the streets of Mecca and in every assembly of the people on hearing the news about resurrection, then the deniers have been asked, don't you see this earth which we have separate as a carpet for you? Don't you see the high mountains which we firmly placed in the earth? Don't you consider yourselves? We have created you as a pairs. Don't you consider sleep? We make you uh, for tranquility. 
so and so forth the, these things has been and day of judgment has been talked about all these things mentioned in this surah so here the surah starts with about what they are asking about the mighty news about way which they are in disagreement so on which people will be resurrected judge and reward or punished mankind differs regarding this news at prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told some people believe it and hold it to be true other rejected and hold it to be as false so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying to those who rejected that they will surely soon know with certain knowledge that what they now believe to be lies is actually the truth that will be when they see the day of resurrection the day they see it unfold those who forget it before in this life will say the message of our lord told the truth about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says kalla sayalamun summa kalla sayalamun no they are going to know again no they are going to know the second sentence is a confirmation of the first in the meaning and the knowledge that allah threatens them with the, here is the certain knowledge they will have when they see the news the day of resurrection witnessing it exactly it was told to them alam najil ardami hada in verse number 6 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explain his favors and blessings he bestow on his servants so they may acknowledge them and become thankful for them he says have we not made the earth spread flat allah made the earth appear to creation as flat it's not for the most part hard and rigid to where cultivation is impossible nor is it difficult to walk upon isn't it when you walk you can walk on it isn't it the ground is also not so soft and loose to where people gain no benefit from it instead it is pla- flat spread out well being so they may benefit from it we all benefit from it wal jibal autada and the mountains are stakes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mountains like stakes similar to how stakes or pegs hold the tent firmly fixed in its place allah also says in other verse the quran wajala fiha rawasiya min fawqiha wa bar wa baraka fiha and he placed on earth firmly set mountains over its surface and he blessed it so this was mentioned in surah al-fussilat ayah number 10 and about these mountain stakes geo scientists say that mountains have below them solid deep rooted fixed root within the earth just like a wall would be firmly rooted into the ground for this reason you find that the mountains are solid and firm not shaken by wind and this is from complete perfect power of allah and his blessing wa qalaqnakum azwaja and we created you in pairs meaning he created us of different complementary kinds male and female small and big black and red sad and happy and other traits mean uh, which people differ so people are varying kinds according to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to seize appropriate and according to his wisdom in this way to people may consider and respect the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that he is capable of making mankind who were created from a single substance from a single father into so many clearly clearly varying types wajal na naumakum subat and we made your sleep a means for rest meaning he made it as a means of relief from fatigue so sleep relieves one's previous exhaustion and work by it people are re- replenished with energy for the next day so you find someone who is worn out exhausted after he sleeps he gain full of vigor and liveliness so this is a favor and blessing from allah and sign from him so wajalna naumakum subata this is so important people they take sleeping pills they want to sleep but they can't sleep but sleep is such a blessing 
nobody can buy the sleep so it is the you know rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we get sleep no matter how sad you are no matter how grief you are but sleep will make you uh, peace and tranquility fan min ayatihi manamukum bil layl wal nahari wa abtiwaukum man fadli this uh, mention in different surah and uh, and of his signs is your sleep by night and uh, you are seeking of his favors this is mentioned in surah to rum ay number 23 so here manamukum bil layl wal nahari wa abtiwaukum min fadli this is the fadl of allah this is the bounty of allah and wajalna layl libasa and we made the night as clothing have you ever seen how night covers as maghrib uh, starts and then isha starts how the night covers allah made the night upon earth like clothing as if earth wears the night it being a complete cover for particular portion of the earth. and a person will not know the reality of this unless he has viewed the earth from high above we have seen that one of the most amazing sign is that when you fly in a plane and reach a highest like you know altitude that the sun is not quite visible from the earth surface but you begin to see it rise from the sky you see that the earth below is as if it is clothed in black uh, from the night wa ja'alna an-nahara ma'asha and we made the day for livelihood maash it is a means of livelihood in that most of the mankind earn a living by day seeking sustenance according to the circumstances and this is yet another one of the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his servant so day time you have to go and do maash you have to earn it and in surah al juma there also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after praying and everything fantashiru again go back waqti ka rabbikum and uh, look for the fadl of rab wa banaina fawqakum saban shidada and we constructed above you seven strong heavens these are the heavens allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as being extremely strong well built because they are indeed strong as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in elsewhere wa sama banaina bi aidin wa inna lam lam asiun and the heaven be constructed with the strength and indeed we are expanding it surah az-zariyat ayah number 47 meaning we built it strong and well fortified wa ja'alna sirajan wa haja and we made the a burning lamp this refers to sun a shining lamp of extremely intense heat burning the sun is blazing and fiery and the heat it produced during the days of summer is extremely intense despite its great distance from the earth what about when sun is brought even close to the earth the severe heat also from the steam and the breath of hell as prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when the heat intensify delay the prey until it is cooler for certainly the intense heat is from exhalation of hell and also sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the fire of hell complained to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying my lord parts of me are destroying other parts so allow me to breathe so allah allowed it to breathe one breath in winter another breath in the summer so the severest cold you witness is from the bitter cold of the hell and the severe heat is from the exhalation of the hell so this hadith is very scary you know when you see how hell fire is eating up their own parts and allow allow it to breed two times one in summer and other in the winter and this is in sahih al bukhari and sahih al muslim despite the in-
intense temperature, the sun is still one of the greatest means of well-being for the creation. For one, it saves people lots of money during the daytime. In that, the sun suffices people from having to use artificial lighting. You know, we don't turn on light usually when sun is bright. Have you ever noticed when sun is bright, we don't. When it is cloudy, then only we use the lights. Also, the solar energy the sun provides in another means of great benefit. Yet another benefit is that sun helps ripen fruits. And there are many other benefits we gain from the lamb that Allah's, Allah has made for his servants. وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَعْصِرَاتِ مَا أَنْ After Allah mentions the burning lamp which provides heat and dryness, he then mentions something opposite yet complementary. He says, and we send down from the rain clouds pouring water. The rain provides moisture and coolness and by it. Earth is made to produce fruits, vegetation, etc. and is brought to life again. So when the sky rain water is supplemented with sunlight and heat, fruits and vegetables are ripened and grow into the most perfect form possible. So when you see sunshine, even your hearts, you know, feel very nice, isn't it? And we send down from the rain clouds. The Arabic word used here, Mosirati, al Mosirat, literally means something that squeeze out. Asara, asara, it refers to clouds. Allah describes clouds as squeezing. If they squeeze water out during rainfall like a wet garment, you know, wet garment may be squeezed or wringed out, the water cremates the cloud so much that it eventually falls as a rain. Much like water is squeezed from a wet garment, pouring water means that it flows out immensely. That we may bring forth thereby grain and vegetation with this same water that falls from the sky to the earth by which the ground sprouts and grows. Allah produces grains in all its various forms, wheat, barley, corn, etc. But Jannatin al fafa and gardens of entwined growth, meaning gardens and arches intertwining from the abundance of the growth and beauty and the trees and bushes with the trunks and branches winding and curving. So from this pouring water, plants and crops are cultivated like date trees, grapes, etc., Regardless of whether these crops benefit directly from the falling of rainwater or by utilizing the water underground, extracting it by roots. The water in the depth of the earth is also originally from the rain as Allah subhanahu wa says, فَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَسْخَيْنَا and we have sent down water from the sky and given you drink from it and you are not its retainers. Surah Al-Hijra number 22. Rather Allah retains the water in the earth. He also says, Alam tara anna Allah anzala min as-samai ma'an fasalakahu do you not see that Allah sends down rain from the sky and make it flow as springs in the earth? Surah Zumar, Ayah number 21. Then Allah says, Inna yawm al-fasli kana miqada. So here, and after Allah reminds of his favors and blessing given to all his servants, he then mentioned the conditions of the day and it is certainly a fixed time at which Allah will gather all people, the first and the last of. He says, Inna yawm al-fasli kana 
Indeed, the day of judgment is an appointed time. This is the day of resurrection. It referred to Arabic as the day of Fasl. Fasl meaning decision, judgment, separation, because Allah will judge on that day between his servants in the matter of dispute between themselves and in the matter in which they differed. So he will distinguish and separate between the people of the earth and those of the falsehood, the people of disbelief and those who believe, the people of injustice and aggression and those of justice and moderation. He will separate the people of Jannah paradise from the people of the hellfire. A group will be in paradise, Jannah, and group will be in flames in Jahannam, hellfire. An appointed time. It is a fake appointed time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا نُعَخَّرَهُ إِلَّا أَجَلِمْ مَعْدُودَاتِ Surah Al-Hud, Ayah number 104. And we do not delay it except for a limited appointed term. So what do you think about something that has limited term and a fixed appointment? And with that, you see this term as if time is moving quickly, day after day, until mankind finally come to an end. And you know, appointment, when you schedule an appointment, you make sure that you want to appear there. Otherwise, you will call them and tell them, this is a fixed appointment. Finally, comes to the end of this term. Just like that, this life is moving quickly day after day, until it will soon reach the end of its term. You know how the year ends, how the day ends. That time we realize that, isn't it? And people, you know, they say every year they celebrate birthday. But I think day by day, we are heading towards the age, isn't it? This is the one way of saying. And uh, I'm just uh, saying uh, it's a reminder, isn't it? All these are reminder that one day we have to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we do not delay it except for a limited, yeah, appointed time. Everything with a limited term will certainly end. The day the horn is blown and you will come forth in multitudes. So here talking about, you know, uh, day of judgment as for the one who will blow, the one responsible for this horn, he is the angel Israfil. He will blow in the horn twice. First time, all people alive at that time will be terrified. First trumpet will be blown, all people will be alive at that time will be terrified. So shocked, they will all fall down to death. The second time, all people will be resurrected. From their graves and their souls will be returned to their bodies. For this Allah says, the horn is blown and you will come forth in multitudes. So mankind will be given life again. Will come forth from their graves all in one group or one group after another. And these groups and Allah knows best are the religious nations. Each nation will be called to their book or their reckoning. Or will be brought to the account. They will come in groups. Arriving at a single overwhelming place. Allah Azwajal will make the earth at that point flat. Level. Having no curvatures. No unevenness. You know when something is flat. Just imagine you can see each other. Nothing is in between. So Allah then says about that. وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ And the heaven is open and will become as gateways. The skies will literally be open, split apart and become gateways. People will watch this on that day witnessing the heavens once a well-preserved ceiling. Become open gateways. This is a proof to the perfect and complete power of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that he will make this same seven strong heavens on the day of resurrection as if they will existed. They will now be gates. Yawma takunu samai kal muhil wa takunu al jibala kal ihin wa la yas'alu hamimu hamima yubsirunahum. The day 
the sky will become like a molten copper and the mountains like a flakes of wool and no friend will ask anything about another friend though they will clearly see each other so that's how it's going to be so this is the thing mentioned in surah al-ma'arij ayah number 8 to 11 وَسُيِّرَتِ الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سُرَابًا And the mountains are removed and will become as a mirage. You know mirage, like you know from far you feel like something is there, water is there and when you go there nothing. This tremendous solid mountains will be destroyed, flattened into sand and then become as a fading mirage. And the mountains are removed and will become as a mirage. And here... إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْسَادًا لِلطَّغِينَ مَآبًا لَا بِسِينَ فِيهَ أَحْقَابًا Indeed, hell has been lying in the wait for the transgressor. It is a place of return in which they will remain for ages unending. Transgression as it is used here means to go beyond the permissible bounds of something. And the bounds set for the mankinds are mentioned وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَابُدُونَ Surah Tuzariyat here it mentioned that and I did not create jinn and my mankind except to worship me. And so whoever goes beyond the limits and does not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then such a person is a transgressor. And hell is a resort for the transgressor. The place to which they are returning and which they will remain forever and ever. They will not taste therein any coolness or drink. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuse them any coolness with which they may cool themselves outwardly. And he refuses them any cold drink by which they may cool themselves inwardly. You know when we feel thirsty, when we have enough food, we want to have water. And after fasting, we want to have water. And that too, we want cold water, especially remember of the summer days. But لا يزوحون فيها بردن ولا شرابا No coldness, no nothing, no cold drink, and nothing to drink. إلا حميما وقصاقا And then what it has been given, what is, has been replaced, except scalding water, intensely cold fluid or foul pus. You know, excretion of the wounds. This is the exception. They have nothing except boiling water or the highest extreme temperature. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned elsewhere, وَإِن يَسْتَغِيسُ يُغَاسُ بِمَا إِن قَلْمُحِ الْيَشْفِ الْوُجُو And if they cry for water, they will give in water like molten brass. And that will scale their faces. This is in Surah Al-Kahf, ayah number 29. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Muhammad, ayah number 15, وَسُوْخُ مَا أَنْ حَمِيمًا فَقَتَ أَمَامَهُمْ And they are given to drink boiling water so that it tears their intestine. فَقَتَ And here, أَمَامَهُمْ Ahum, they, their intestines will be cut off because of that. If you drink very hard, uh, what's going to happen? And here word gassaqan, intensely cold fluid or foul pus, you know, excretion of the wounds. The scholars of the Quran interpreted, says that this is an intensely cold drink, having a putrid smell. So they will combine and refuges with Allah between intensely hot water and intensely cold water so that they feel punishment from two different perspectives hot and cold but other scholars say wasaqan refers to instead to the pus which comes out of the people of the fire those who are in hellfire and whatever else is secreted from them of the filth sweat and so on and so forth Either way indicates that they will taste nothing but a drink that will cut up their intestines. From intestine heat and will tear their inside from intense cold. So may Allah protect us all. So what we learn from this, not only 
excretion of the wound and also the people in hellfire whatever the fluid that is excreting whether it's pus or blood or sweat all those excretion was made to drink and not only that hot and cold in a intense manner that you can't consume it if you consume it it's so hard your intestine will you know burn it that is scalding hot and uh, different times of uh, different types of punishments are combined the punishment is even further increased for the people of hellfire jaza un bi faqa an appropriate in recompense they are only punished in accordance with their deeds and allah is no way oppressing them allah says inna allah la yazlimu an-nas shay'an walakin nas anfusahum yazlimun and surely allah does not do any justice to injustice to people but people are unjust to themselves see walakin nas anfusahum yazlimun we are doing an injustice to ourselves this is in surah yunus ayah number 44 انهم كانوا لا يرجون حسابا وكذبوا باياتنا كذابا indeed they were not expecting any account they denied our verses with insistent denial they were persistent on that they were denying allah explained the deviation in belief and in statement indeed they were not expecting any account so that's the reason you know many people they do so much zulm injustice they oppress people and they live the life like they say we are free bird who will ask who will see the day of judgment so they don't have that belief they don't expect any account in the hereafter they did not anticipate that they would ever be taken account rather they denied the judgment altogether as well the resurrection saying mahiya illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa na nahya wa ma yuhlikuna illa dahr there is nothing but our worldly life we die and live nothing destroy us except time so this is also mentioned in surah uh, jasya ayah number 24 and here we see they never expected to be called to account what they did during their lives because they used to completely deny it would ever happen this is the deviation of belief in their hearts as for the deviation in the statements they belied the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is all lies this is magic this is crazy and other such statement in same way disbelievers used to belie allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and kazalika ma ata allazina min qablihim min rasulin illa qalu sahirun wa majnun and they said similarly no messenger came to those before them but they said on him a sorcerer or madman this is in surah zariyah ayah number 52 allah says about those who accuse muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of being a liar wa qala kafirun haza sahirun kadhab and the disbeliever says this is a sorcerer a liar other times they would say that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is nothing but a poet or do they say poet we wait for them the evil accidents of time am yaquluna shairun and wa qalu ya ayyuhal ladina nuzila alayhi al-zikra innaka lamajnun law ma atina bil malaikati in kunta minas sadiqin and they say oh you upon whom the message is revealed you are certainly insane why don't you bring the angels to us if you are truthful they are saying this words to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah had not supported the messengers and made them patient with their own people they would not have been able to withstand it so in addition to this who accused the messenger of being liar they did not stop there rather they used to even physically harm the prophets as they did with the messenger of uh, allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the harshest way they went so far as to take up arms against the messenger waging war sallallahu alaihi wasallam so whoever does that his recompense is jahannam hellfire 
an appropriate recompense consist with its own action and an appropriate recompense indeed they were not expecting account they denied our verses with ins insistent denial persistent wa kull shay'in ahsaynahu kitaba but all things we have enumerated in writing here all things including what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself does creating planning in the universe it also includes whatever his servants do actions and statements whether small or big allah enumerated everything meaning precisely counted everything accurately with no error at all in writing everything is written down it has also been confirmed in an authentic hadith that allah wrote down and preordained everything that is to occur until the last hour comes among those things are the action of the children of adam all of the mankind all of their action are written down and each and every statement a person makes it write down allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, this is a hadith in sahih muslim the text is allah wrote down and preordained all creations 50000 years before the even created the heaven and earth and in another hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the first thing allah created was the pen he said to it to write the pen as oh lord what should i write allah replied write the pre decree of everything that is to occur until the last day this hadith is recorded in abu daud and tirmizi and allah mention ma yalfizu min qawlin illa ladayhi raqiban atid man does not utter any word except that with him is an observer prepared to record it this is in surah al-qaf ayah number 18 so here see someone from the angel is watching each person and present with him at all time it has been reported that while imam ahmad was sick and groaning from his ailment someone came upon him and said o abu abdullah taus see that even the moans of a sick person are written down so imam ahmad sees moaning out of fear that it will be recorded so what about our endless speech words flowing non stop day and night that you know whatever without even thinking we talk we have to be really careful what we are doing all things will be enumerated in writing so we have to think about it here uh, taus was the well known successor to the companions of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith in sahih bukhari says allah recorded the good deeds and the bad deeds and he then explained them so whoever intends to do a good deed but is unable to do it allah recorded with himself as a complete good deed but if he intends to do it and actually does the good deed allah recorded with himself as 10 times the reward up to 700 times or even more reward and whoever intends to do a bad deed but does not do it allah recorded with himself as complete good deed as if he intends to do it actually does not do the bad deed allah record only when he actually does the bad deed so that's how allah is ghafur ur rahim allah is full of mercy allah always is merciful to his slave so surah an naba so we were doing surah an naba and here let's uh, continue that there are few things we were discussing about and regarding that matter let's see further inshallah let's continue so here the fazuqu falan nazidakum illa azaba so taste the punishment and never we will increase you except in torment so this is form of further insult and rebuke in other word it is said to the people of fire taste the punishment as of a form of indignity and reprimand them for we will not give you anything except increase in the punishment and we will not lighten our, our, it upon you and we will not leave you in the state instead we will increase the punishment it will become stronger against you 
you will stay in longer and will experience more types of uh, more types of punishment in uh, another words it mentioned the people uh, in the fire will ask the keeper wa qahl allazina fi an-nar li khazanati jahannam du rabbakum yukhaffaf anna yawman man al-azab and those in the fire will say to the keepers of hell call upon your lord that he may lighten the punishment upon us for a single day surah al-ghafirah number 49 and there are some very important points to consider about this verse the people of fire will say these people will not ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly instead they will request the keeper of hell to call upon allah for them and allah says اِغْسَأُوا فِيهَا وَلَا تُقَلِّمُونِ Remain despised therein. Do not speak to me. Surah Al-Mu'minun And here in ayah number 108, Allah is not speaking to them. And they will see themselves as not even deserving of asking Allah directly and calling upon Him without some sort of mediator. and they will say call upon your lord and call upon your lord this is because neither their face nor their hearts will be able to speak or think by associating the lordship of allah with themselves by saying our lord they will see themselves so shameful and disgraced and humiliated that they will not deserve to associate themselves with allah's lordship so they instead what they are saying your lord so the people of the fire also will not say that he may relieve us from the punishment instead they say that he may lighten the punishment have you noticed they are asking to lighten the punishment because they have completely despaired lost all hope of ever getting completely out of the punishment so they only for it to be lightened and we see we seek allah's protection you know اللهم اجرني من النار من الله protect us all from the fire of the hell and they also will not say lighten the punishment upon us forever they are not using forever instead they say for a single day just for a day with this it becomes clear the anguish and misery they will be in of punishment disgrace and shame وَتَرَاهُمْ يَعْرَضُونَ عَلَيْهَا خَاشِئِينَ مِنْ ذُلِّ يَنْظُرُونَ مِنْ طَرْفٍ خَفِيَّةٍ And you will see them being exposed to the fire, humble from humiliation, looking with a faint glance. So this is in Shura, Ayah number 45. So, and from Ayah number 31, it says after the statements in previous verses so taste the punishment and never we we increase you except in torment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mention something what is prepared for the righteous people this is because quran is balanced whenever punishment is mentioned reward is often mentioned next and vice versa similarly when the people of good deeds are mentioned the people of evil deeds are mentioned and when truth is mentioned falsehood or falsehood also mentioned it is balanced like this so that a person worship his lord balanced between fear of allah and hope for allah's mercy if a person has much more hope than fear he may begin to feel safe and secure from allah if he has too much fear he may begin or despair of allah's mercy both situation are major sins and both are wrong Imam Ahmad said a person must be with the regards to his worship of this lord between fear and hope if either one becomes too much it will destroy the person so you find the quran often speaks of one thing and then something which complements and it is comparative to it this also that uh, the souls may not lean too much to one side focusing solely one condition without thinking of the correspondence to it in such a way uh, people read quran they may be hopeful yet fearful this is part of the eloquence of the quran <laughs> excuse me 
inna lil muttaqina mafaza indeed for the muttaqin is success is paradise the muttaqin are the people with taqwa or a constant consciousness of allah they are those who are constantly conscious of allah's punishment and they remain in the state by fulfilling his command and staying away from what he prohibits in the quran sometimes allah commands people to have taqwa of him of him sometimes to have taqwa on the day of reckoning sometimes to have taqwa of fire so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says but taqullaha la'allakum tuflihun but taqun nar and have taqwa of allah so that you may be successful and have taqwa of the fire so here Uh, he combines between the command to have taqwa of himself and the fire also what taqu yawman turjauna fihi ila allah and have taqwa of day on which you will be turn to allah return to allah and here he commands people to have taqwa of day of reckoning and each of this difficulty uses includes one general meaning that people must conscious of the bounds sets by allah and obeying him and abstaining from sins so the muttaqin are those who fulfill what allah has commanded and abstain away from the forbidden things this is how it will be and for those people there is success paradise the arabic word used here is mafaza mafaza means a place of success and the time of success so they are successful in their place and during their days mafaza so meaning is so vast means a place of success and time of success so they are successful in their place and during their days hada ikhaba an aba and gardens and grape vines this part of success and attainment will have gardens means gardens and orchards containing in abundance and magnificent trees and bushes of varying kinds and you know grape vines it looks so nice beautiful pretty as well as when you eat it this is so delicious in different colors so grape vines are a type of orchid but allah chose to specifically mention them here you know only mention we it gives so much happiness isn't it and wakawa ipa atraba and full breast companions of equal age aquaba and thuraba the arabic word used here is kawaib kawaib is kawaib the plural is kaib which means a woman whose breasts are apparent and do not droop or sag rather they are raised protruding similar in the uh, arabic language to the word for the ankle cap which is also protrudes and this is the most beautiful state of one's chest of equal age means that the women in paradise will be of one age they will not differ in age like women in this life if some were older or younger than others perhaps the balance harmony between them would be affected or perhaps some may feel unhappy they are not the same standard as others so they are equal age so here the cas in the hawk and full cup the intended meaning here is full cup of glass of wine although maybe it is wine or some uh, other drink because this is paradise so reverse of water an altered in taste or smell reverse of milk taste of which never changes reverse of wine delicious to those who drink and reverse of purified honey la yasmauna fiha laghwan wala kithaba neither vain speech will they hear there nor any thing lying the people of jannah paradise will hear no ill speech which is any vain talk containing no real benefit nor any lying the people of jannah paradise will neither lie nor accuse one another of lying that is because they will be upon thrones facing one another and allah will remove from their hearts any form of resentment and make them all as brothers so what we learn here la yasmauna fiha laghwan wala kithaba 
hear any love any vain talk that will hurt you here sometimes people are lying and uh, making excuses and uh, this make you feel hurt but there nothing like that jaza ummin rabbika atal hisaba a reward from your lord a sufficient gift they are being rewarded with this reward from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the righteous deeds they perform in this life and because they had taqwa of what allah has prohibited sufficient and suitable the arabic word hisaba hisaban originate from hasb which means sufficiency for example the glass of wine mentioned previously will will suffice the people of jannah completely they will need nothing else with it due to the perfect taste and uh, holds some benefit to provide them and here later we see from ayah number 37 rabbis samawati wal ardi wa ma bainahum ar rahman la yamlikuna minhu qitaba from the lord of the heaven and the earth and whatever is between them the most merciful they do not pass any authority from him to speak as for the lord of the heavens and the earth whatever is in between them is lord everything he says inna ma umirtu an a'budu rabbi hazihi al-baladi allazi harramaha wa lahu kullu shay i only been commanded to worship the lord of the cities who made it sacred to him belongs all things so allah is the lord of seven heavens and and the lord of the earth and they are also seven in number uh, that has been confirmed the sunan for allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam whatever is between meaning whatever huge and magnificent creation that uh, exists between the heaven and earth like clouds planets and other things we may know about it it also include those creation that no one but allah may know of it they do not possess any authority from him to speak people will have no right to address allah nor will anyone speak at all except with the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawma yaqumu ar-ruh wal malaa'ikatu saffan saffan la yatakallamuna illa man azina lahu ar-rahman fa qala sawaba the day the spirit and the angels will stand in the rows they will not speak except for one whom the most merciful allows they will not speak until unless allah gives the permission he will say what is correct as for the day that the spirit the spirit here refers to angel jibril and the angels will stand in the rows the angels will stand row after row what has come in the hadith the angels of the lowest heaven of this world will descend and surrounded the creation then the angels of the second will follow them then those of the third then fourth then fifth so angels will come in rows no one knows how numerous they are except one who created them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they will not speak except for whom allah gives the permission here most merciful is allah he will say what is correct none of the angels or anyone else will speak allah as in another uh, ayah allah says wa khashat al aswatu li rahmani fala tasmau illa hamsa and all voices will be still before most merciful so you will not hear except the whisper so except for one whom the most merciful allows no one will speak unless given permission by allah and he will then only speak with what allah allows him to and he will say what is correct he will say only what is correct and what pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that refers to the intercession if allah allows someone to intercede for another he will intercede in the manner to extend the allah allows if allah allows then only it is possible otherwise no so here zalika yawm al haqq fa man sha takhaza ila rabbihi ma'aba this is true they so whoever will make take a way of return to his lord as for what is the true day that which we have informed you is the true day and 
the truth is opposite of falsehood so the meaning is that this day is certain to occur on it and truth will be established and justice will be established on that day when no wealth or children will be of any benefit except for one who comes to allah with good heart so whoever will uh, may take a way of return to his lord meaning whoever wishes to do the deeds by which he may turn in repentance to allah thereby return to allah and they are righteous deeds that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement so whoever will may take a way of return to his lord must be understood in the connection with another verse in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says liman sha minkum an yastaqima wa ma tashauna illa an yasha allah rabbul alamin for whoever wills among you take a right course and you do not will anything else allah will the lord of the worlds these verses together means that we as people do have free will in that we may do as we please no one forces us to do anything however despite that our free will our choice our wills all depend on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do not will anything unless allah wills and allah only clarifies this uh, his book so that people do not rely upon themselves and their own wills rather they know that their choice and free wills are connected to the will and decision of allah so that they resort to allah asking him for guidance in doing what he loves and he pleased with so person should not conditionally say i am free i can choose what i want and do what i want we say that yes the issue is like that uh, but you are still connected to the will and the decision of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ان انزلناكم عذابا قريبا يوم ينزل المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقولون كافر يا ليت كنت ترابا indeed we have warned you of a near punishment the day when a man will observe what his hands have put forth and this belief will say oh i wish i were dirt as for indeed we have warned you of a near punishment it means we have frightened you of a near punishment which is the day of resurrection and the day of resurrection is certainly close and if there remain a million years of this life it is still close kaannahum yawma yarawnaha lam yalbasu illa ashiyatan wa duhaha and it will be on the day they see it as though they had not remained in the world except for an afternoon or a morning so this is chastisement that allah wants us a definitely close there is nothing between a person and a death and no one knows when he will die he may make it to the morning but not in the evening. allah allah we don't know the day when a person will observe what his hands have put forth here person means that every single person will see what his or her hands have set forth his deeds set right before him he will be given his book of deeds and it will be told ikra kitabaka kafa bi nafsikal yawma alayka hisaba read your record sufficient is yourself you this day as an accountant so and the disbelievers from the severity of what they witness of horrors and punishment will say oh i wish i were a dirt meaning oh i wish i were never created i wish i were never resurrected you know because of that frighten and you know or when the disbelievers see the animals that allah judges between them and says to them be dust they become dust or dirt so the disbelievers will wish they were dirt like the animals so this is the statement i wish i were dirt carries three possible things first meaning disbelievers means oh i wish i were dirt so that i was never created because mankind was created from dirt we all know right and turab and so on and so forth the second meaning oh i wish i were dirt so that i was never resurrected meaning that he remained dirt in the depth of his grave third meaning when the disbeliever sees the animal after allah judged between them and say to them be, become dust he means oh i wish i were dust like this animals and allah knows best so with the explanation of surah naba we complete here surah number 
and within this sura there are many reminders worthy of reflection points of wisdom and signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which people may increase and strengthen themselves in certain knowledge and faith we ask that he causes us and you all who are listening to benefit from this and to this is a reminder for our hearts to cure and uh, we always become thankful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so here what we learn in surah an-naba from starting to end first they were talking about a uh, great news and they were mocking and they were not certain about it isn't it but after that they were certain and allah talks about after the great news allah talks about allazihum fi mukhtalifun they their disagreement and soon kalla sayalamun and allah emphasizes that soon they will come to know and allah uh, remind of the how made the earth alam najil ardh mihada and then reminds of the jibal and how the autada how it has been like a plague pegs has has been firmly rooted mountains and we are in the pairs wa qalaqnakum azwaja and then talking about our jalna naumakum subata sleep is a you know a peace and tranquility and a rest for us and we get fresh up and the how night and day days for the work and how seven heavens are there and burning lamp it talks about sun and then how the water has been sent like a rain and then habba and nabat a green and vegetation and how the intertwined uh, gardens has been mentioned so allah mentioned the different uh, bounties of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talking about day of judgment then the trumpet will be blown heaven will be open gateways will be open and how the mountains will look like a mirage hell has been lying in wait inna jahannam kanat mirsada ambush how the person want to hunt and ambush it that that's the way ittaqina ma'aba but for the transgression a place of return and they will be lab seen fiha aqaba in which they will remain for ages unending and uh, we have seen la yazquna fiha bardan wala sharaba illa hamima wa ghassaka and when they feel thirsty they will meet to drink either cold or hot water and the pus of the wounds and the all the dirt from the hell fire they will have that and this is because jazaa'u bi faqam appropriate recompense and uh, allah will uh, assemble all and those who deny the meeting and allah says wa kull shay'in ahsaynahu kitab all things have been enumerated in the book fayazuhu falan nazidakum illa azaba taste the punishment and will increase you except in the torment the punishment will be increasing and here and after that we have seen like uh, allah reminds so many blessing and then talk about muttaqin so that is the beauty of the quran when talk about jahannam then talk about jannah so inna lil muttaqina mafaza hadaiqa wa an ama wa kawaiba atraba indeed for muttaqin success paradise gardens grape wine full breasted company companions of equal age and a full cup neither vain speech will hear nor anything reward from your lord jazaa'u mir rabbika ata hisab and this is from your lord that you are given that gift so for that gift we have to try in this world and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the topic rabb samawati wal ard wa ma bainahuma rahmana la yamlikuna minhu kitaba so heaven and earth what is between the, that is most merciful they do not possess any authority to speak until unless allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the permission and then in the end we see indeed we have one you of a near punishment the day when a person will observe that his hands have put forth and the disbelievers say oh i wish i were a dirt in anzarnakum azaban qariba yawm yanzurul mar'u ma qaddamat yadahu wa yaqulu kafiru يا ليتني كنت ترابا جزاك الله خيرا كثيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك